Hello, welcome to another program in our series, Eye on Israel. I'm your host, Shachar Azani of the Israeli Consulate in New York City. And on this series, we want to introduce you to some of the most captivating individuals who are shining light on Israeli life and society, both in Israel and around the world. Today, we are excited to speak with a young man who has produced some of the most insightful works on several of Israel's most influential leaders in the 20th century. Avi Shilon is a well-renowned Israeli journalist and historian who has written two fascinating biographies of former Israel Prime Ministers Menachem Begin and David Ben-Gurion. Shilon's biography on Prime Minister Begin, entitled Menachem Begin, A Life, delves into Begin's life, his time in office, and his personality, which helped shape today's political landscape in Israel. The book has been called the most in-depth and profound biography on Begin to ever be published. Avi's latest work, entitled Ben-Gurion, Epilogue, explores the final days of Israel's first Prime Minister, David Ben-Gurion, from the time he left office to his passing in 1973. In addition to his work as a biographer, Avi also contributes a weekly column in the Israeli newspaper Haaretz, where he comments on social and political issues in Israel. Prior to his time in Haaretz, Avi was an op-ed editor of Israel Hayom, one of the most uh, influential and popular newspapers in the country. And on top of all of that, Avi is also pursuing a PhD at Bar Ilan University in the Department of Political Science. It's a great pleasure to have you with us, Avi. Thank you very much for coming and making the way from Tel Aviv to New York City. Thank you for having me. So, I know this is going to be a fascinating conversation, but allow me to ask you, looking into the biographies, the books that you've written, you're a young man. Yeah. What attracted you to dealing with the pillars of Zionism? Well, for, for me, since childhood, Zionism was a fairy tale. When people, you know, little children was obsessed with TV and Star Wars and things like that and adventure. For me, the most interesting thing was the story of Zionism. It was like a miracle. And when I uh, became a, a, a student at Tel Aviv University, I learned Jewish history. And I was fascinated by, about, by the period of the underground the Yeshuv era, before the establishment of Israel. And from there, I, I dwelled into Begin's life, and uh, this is the outcome. That's the outcome. So let me ask you, before the biographies, yeah. there is the biographer. Yeah. So for Purim, did you ask your father to buy you a pen? How did you know that this is the path, the career path you want to take? What attracted you to the world of, of books and biographies and Jewish history at Tel Aviv universities? I, I always uh, saw myself as a descent of uh, Yehuda Maccabi or uh, Bar Kokhva or a great figure like them and I uh, try to transform it, transform it to my personal life as a child. For example, when we play soccer, right. here in the US it's not so popular, but right. I liked... Uh, Getting more and more. Yeah, <laughs> I liked uh, soccer very well. And the, the tactics of the play, I try to uh, transform the way of thinking of Bar Kokhva. For example, attack them from the side and things like that. So everything was uh, complex with the, the Jewish history and the current life of a little uh, child. So this is who you are. You, you're talking about at a very early age. Yeah, yeah. What about the attraction to writing, being a member of the media? Um, you, you were op-ed editor, you, wrote, yeah. you write columns to this very day, yeah. very interesting ones, I have to say. Thank you. What, what brought you to that position? Maybe it could be sound a bit uh, perplex uh, for me. I don't know if to say or not, but I right. will say it frankly. Please, please. Uh, you know, I wrote a diary as a, a lot of uh, teenagers. And what was uh, interesting, I think, was that I wrote the diary as a three different newspaper. Aaretz, Yediot Achronot and Chadashot. It was a new newspaper that already right. been uh, 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 gone. And for example, if I was dating a girl, so one of the, the part of the diary was like Aaretz, the series uh, newspaper. Avi is dating, she is, and uh, they go there with a the commentator of the depth of this meeting. Right. 
And another one was, uh, like from Yediot Achronot, more popular. Avi and th this girl uh, had been uh, seen uh, at the restaurant. And another uh, commentary from another point of view. But uh, after, and when I uh, registered to the university, right. I decided to be a play writer. But uh, when I uh, started to work at uh, Tel Mariv in the beginning, I changed my course to philosophy and Jewish uh, history. Right. And then one day I read this diary. I was after the army, 20 and something, and throw it to the garbage. Why? Because I was so afraid that someday I will be famous and someone will find it and it will be so embarrassed to me. Now I'm a bit sorry. Right. That's, that's, that's a diary you wrote when you were... Uh, a young student exploring the world through three different media eyes. Yeah, That's before incredible. I was student, before when were. I was in high school. That's unbelievable, yeah. unbelievable. Um, so basically, going to philosophy, Jewish history, you always had that sense of belonging to a bigger, a bigger scheme, the yeah. Jewish connection. Yeah. And as somebody, you grew up in Israel your whole life. Yeah. What brought up this Jewish connection? Oh, allow me to... Many a time here in the U.S. and as, an, uh, as a viewer of this reality, I can see that the, the idea of the Jewish identity and its place in American life, in American Jewish life, you wrote a short story that explores Jewish identity of young Israelis, right? In a book called, What Are You More, Jewish or Israeli? in 2003. Yeah. I just want to ask you, first of all on you, what brought up this Jewish, this awareness to your Jewish identity? You know, maybe I'm too young to, to really understand my life, right. but uh, I wrote the biography of Begin and the monography of That's ben an Gurion. amazing sentence, you know, maybe I'm too young to understand my life. That's such a biographer sentence. <laughs> and uh, when you're acting in life, you are doing things, some of them are uh, good, some of them are... Uh, uh, not so good, and uh, I didn't uh, preserve myself, preserve myself as someone who is uh, a really uh, significant role. But a year and a half ago, uh, my uh, nephew Ziv Shilon, he right. was an he was an officer in uh, Givati right. at uh, the IDF, and he got injured in Gaza, right. and they uh, had to cut his hand. And when I came to visit him at the hospital, and he's a great uh, child. This is the, the, the major who was injured on the Gaza border yeah, with the attack yeah. and his heroic story of coming back from his injury. And yeah, yeah. You're yeah. related. Yeah. Wow. He's my nephew. Right. And uh, when I saw uh, his uh, subordinate, his, uh, and how did he talk to them, and how did he explain them the Zionism, and how did he explain them the moral issue? I suddenly saw myself as a young guy. And then I understand that something is rooted in my family. Right. Uh, it's not a coincidence that I wrote about, uh, about Begin and my uh, nephew was uh, an officer uh, at uh, Gaza. And uh, it's something like uh, a Safra and Saifa family. Right. So it r basically it runs in the family. Yeah. And when you're talking about Ziv's leadership, you're talking about prior to the injury or after the injury or both? Both. He has, uh, he has been admired by his uh, subordinate uh, as a leader before and of course after that because he's still in the process of his uh, injury. It's very hard to see so uh, enthusiastic person without uh, his hand and I hope it will be recovered. Right. Uh, you know, I've, I've met I've met Ziv in, the, Ziv in the past, and it's amazing that from the same family you have one with a sword, and one with a pen. Yeah. Um, talking about going back to the Jewish and Israeli identities, this is an issue that we really care about. Yeah. Israelis, young Israelis, in your opinion, are they more Jewish or more Israeli, or it's the same? Well, I I believe that if you will ask them, they will surely say we are more Israeli. But there is something very strange. You can see an Israeli in a journey for even a month. You know, I, I, uh, I have a warm sentiment to the, toward the Jewish religion, but uh, almost I had been never uh, praying uh, Mincha. And here, after three weeks, I uh, went to, uh, lo I looked for Minyan and to say the Mincha. You looked for it. Yeah. And you can see a lot of Israeli like that. Eventually, I think, 
Abroad yeah. or in Israel? In Israel, no, because it be Israel became such a natural Jewish phenomena that you didn't, you don't pay the, the, the enough attention to your identity because it's natural. Maybe this is one of the achievement of Zionism because they want us to be a natural Jew without perplex and the, the developing into our identity. Right. But when you, as an Israeli, go to the U.S. or anywhere else in the world, it's not by accident that the Chabad uh, uh, activities are so popular, because then you feel uh, first and foremost a Jew as a Jewish. You know, there are, there are those who claim that the political realities in Israel have created a situation that Israelis abstain from Jewish identity. And sometimes somebody who even used the word disgusted by the politics of religion. Is this something that you've noticed to be true? In Israel? In Israel? Uh, by the approach of young Israelis? No, I think that uh, on the contrary, there is a phenomenon of, uh, I don't know if to call it uh, being uh, religious, because it's not like uh, to, obey, uh, to obey the halacha mitzvahs, but it's something like uh, re religiosity. Right. And a lot of Israelis nowadays, this is, the, I think, the main phenomena uh, of the young to keep the Jewish tradition. Maybe, you know, we are in an era of postmodernism, so it's a bit, uh, everyone can uh, build his own identity. It's an era of uh, fluid identity. Right. So someone can say I'm Jew because I'm going to wear the Yarmouk, or someone will say I'm Jewish because I'm going to have a seminar about uh, the days of uh, Arambam. Everyone, everybody finds his way, his path. But there is something of uh, connecting uh, again to the Jewish religion. So, so basically, being <coughs> Jewish has become an individual identity with a global context. Exactly. I, you know what, let's, I know we're not going to have enough time. So um, I want to go into the, your work for a minute. The book you wrote about uh, Begin and the book you wrote about Ben-Gurion. First of all, the entryway to those books. What can we learn here in the United States from your experience in trying to transmit, convey that history to our youngsters today? What can we tell young American Jews and how can we entice them to be interested in that part of Zionist history in an era where the, the mere word Zionism has been, conti is continuously tarnished by a variety of factions? Yeah, I, I don't want we do? to think my own, of course, but I can say that because I wrote these uh, biographies right. from the point of view of uh, the young generation, I think that I looked at them, at, uh, about Begin and Ben-Gurion, of course, from another perspective, even uh, from a cultural perspective. It's not only from the, you know, the old school historians. For right. example, I, I'm here for almost a month, and I'm without my uh, wife and my uh, little son, who, who is uh, only 10 uh, months, uh, years old, and I'm, it's a craving to see them. Right. And I wanted to understand Begin as a young person who was leading an Irgun, an underground uh, movement. How come he lived with his uh, family together uh, in Daigais? and they uh, didn't uh, play alone because, for example, it's Chak Shamir uh, and uh, also David Ben-Gurion lived for a long period without their per uh, family right. because they had to protect them. Right. And it's very interesting to know that Begin could not, it's, it is only example of examining as a person, could not have been without his wife right. and his son Benny. And uh, some could see it, uh, that he even risked them. But for him, without them, without being together, he could not have the, the, even the strength to lead the Irgun. So this is an example of how did I uh, look at this person, not only from the regular uh, point of view. So <coughs> you're basically what you're doing, if I understand correctly, is personifying these incredible figures. Yeah. You're helping them come off the stage and using this book, introduce them to the general public in a very personal and humane way. Yeah. That's creating a connection with the yeah. reader. Yeah, of course. I'm putting it in the, the context. historical uh, context. It had been published by Yale University Press. Right. Uh, Congratulations. Very, thank you. 
It's a very uh, uh, historic uh, sure. story. But if you can, if you want, you can see it even as uh, the great Roman about the, uh, uh, it's not the job uh, for me to say the great, but right. you know what I mean? As a Hollywoodic story about Menachem Begin. And I'll, I'll be more than happy to toot your horn on these books. <laughs> They're truly fascinating. Um, going to Ben-Gurion for a minute, many people think of Ben-Gurion as this incredible uh, visionary leader who's connected to 1948, to the reestablishment of the State of Israel, Third Temple. Few people remember that he was alive during the uh, um, Yom Kippur War, 1973. Yeah. What can you tell us about him around that time and how, what kind of Ben-Gurion did you find in those times? Yeah, th this story was the trigger for me to write about Ben-Gurion because, you know, every year, especially this year when, it, when they marked the 40th anniversary, right. anniversary to the Yom Kippur War, the Israeli media and the journalists and the, the scholars are uh, covering every corner of the story of uh, Milchemet, uh, the war of uh, Yom Kippur. And uh, just one thing is missing. Where was Ben-Gurion? Right. And I'm sure if you ask many Israelis, they would tell you he passed away. He yeah, wasn't there yeah. for that war. Nobody even realized that he was alive. But he was alive. And I found in uh, Shimon Peres diary right. a very moving sentence. He went to Ben-Gurion during the war. And they want to be encouraged by him, by the great uh, father of this nation. Right. And Peres wrote only one uh, sentence. I had never ate the oldness as in this moment. This is what Ben-Gurion told him? No, no. Oh, this is what Peres felt Paris. after this meeting. Oh, okay. And then I realized that there was something there. In the darkest days of the country, Ben-Gurion was not at his best. His uh, closest uh, aide, who became the leader of Israel, want to, to carry strength with him. And I wanted to know what has happened in this meeting. Right. And uh, it's not a coincidence that uh, Ben-Gurion uh, got a stroke uh, during this war and during passed war. away uh, a little time after it. And this uh, symbolic uh, events uh, were the trigger for me to try to understand who was Ben-Gurion in his last year. What did he find? What did uh, Paris find in, in, in Ben-Gurion in that meeting? When you said well, he, you, he's never hated being old so much as he hated in that meeting. Yeah, because uh, it was uh, Shimon Peres and he uh, read to Ben-Gurion uh, a letter from Golda Meir and another uh, member of Knesset were there. And they asked, uh, as I said, Ben-Gurion wasn't at its best in right. those days. But he was uh, fully aware to the war. And then they asked him, Ben-Gurion, say something. We want to have, uh, you know, to, to get strength. And Ben-Gurion said only, this is a very serious situation. So they asked him, Ben-Gurion, you created the IDF. Don't you count on the IDF? He said, yes, but this is a very serious situation. situation. Wow. So it shows you, first of all, he wasn't at it best, as I see, and that I uh, wrote in the, the, the book. But this sentence that Ben-Gurion is trying to give them the, the strength, the courage, but fully realized that something very, very almost devastating is happening. Mm -hmm. This was the score of this, uh, what should have been uh, the last uh, meeting of Ben-Gurion and the uh, leadership of Israel. The last meeting. Did you, um, was it easy for you to explore these uh, historic figures? Were the state records, people, were they willing to talk to you? Was it easy for you to dive into that research or was it difficult? What, what was the sense you got from people when you tried to explore these topics? No, we, it wasn't easy because, you know, Begin, for example, is still arousing a great tension in Israel. He has his admi great admirers and uh, the, the people who still hate him and critics him. And this subject is like uh, touching fire. Right. And, it, uh, and wasn't here comes a young man, Abba yeah. Shilon, who decides yeah. to dive headfirst into that quagmire of fire, especially yeah. in the Israeli bog. Yeah. You're a brave man. Yeah, uh, thank you. I'm not sure if I'm so brave, but uh, 
I think that for me it was first and foremost a fascinating story. Of course I'm Zionist, but I didn't come with a bias, uh, prejudgment uh, ideas uh, regarding Begin. And, and either way. Neither no, way. No, no prejudice. Neither way. And the people who, t who I uh, tried to talk with about Begin, they were very suspicious. Right. Suspicious. Why are you want to right. do it? What was your family came from? A lot of asking I had been asked right. I, uh, before the writing. And even uh, within the process, it was very hard to, to reach people who were uh, in close relationship bet between him. And I can understand them. They didn't want to be, to take part in some project that they don't know what will be the outcome. Right. And uh, with Ben Gurion it was more easier because Ben Gurion is something that uh, he arose a lot of uh, interest in his view. Right. But uh, his position in the Israeli history is a uh, much comfort position. Right, more mainstream. And yeah. All. But did you do it on purpose, Avi? Did you write about these two um, two people who were in many ways arch rivals in the history of yeah. Israel. And the fact that he chose to write one about one and then about the other, was that on purpose or just it happened to be? How did that connection come to be? And what did you learn about, not about each of them individually, but about the interconnection between them? Yeah, first of all, the as a scholar, it's, it's the same field. It's the field of the, the, the Zionism uh, movement. But they are so different. Yes. And uh, I think that uh, I cannot say that it is by accident because something on me apparently uh, is very uh, obsessed with uh, the great leader of the, right. the, the Jewish people. I think that the connection between them, uh, we can talk for hours about the, the great debates between them, but in the end of uh, Ben-Gurion's life, in 1969, Ben-Gurion wrote to Menachem Begin a letter. In it, and it started with the, the phrase that Paula, my wife, was a great admirer of you. Right. And it is very interesting letter because uh, when you think about it... Paula, my wife, is a great admirer of you. Yeah. When you think about it, a lot of uh, historians show this uh, letter as a proof to their reconciliation. But you know, sometimes only after I uh, got married, I understand that sometimes you take advantage of your wife to say things that you don't want to say directly. And when you say, Paula, my wife was a great admirer of you, it shows that Ben Gurion, even in his last years, and even when he wanted to have uh, some kind of a re reconciliation with Begin, still became, you know, a bit... Uh, uh, Softened a bit. Yeah furious a bit, and uh, he, he, he softened a bit, of course, but on the other hand, he, couldn't, he could not reach his own hand right. totally toward the begging. Right. And it's uh, very interesting only also the connection between them. You know, I, um, I can't help but to ask you, from your in-depth research into the Jewish leaders, and you said m great leaders of the Jewish people. You did not yes. say of Israel, and that yes. is a meaningful statement. I yes. do not have time to dive into it, but it's a meaningful statement. I want to ask you, what do we learn, or what do you learn, or what could you tell us about leaders of Israel in those eras and the leaders of today and tomorrow? What's the main difference that you see in, in how, you know, in the attitude of these leaders? Yeah, I think that uh, Ben-Gurion and Begin, and you are right, it's not by accident that I uh, uh, label them as the Jewish uh, okay. leader because they were something that you can say transformal le uh, leaders, which means they wanted to shape the, U the, the, the Jews' perception, the Israeli society. They uh, carried the burden of the Jewish history on their back, and they were looked, looking for the future. And nowadays, we have what I can call uh, an executive uh, leaders, which means they know how to uh, uh, run things and to uh, trying to, to keep the Israel interest at best. But most of them didn't come from the, the, this perspective of carrying the Jewish history on their burden. Right, Jewish Some, history. Yeah. You know, you said something extremely fascinating. You talk about v looking into the future. And in one of the statements in the book about Ben-Gurion, there is actually a statement of him saying that 
uh, he finds man to be enslaved by technology. Yeah. This is not 2014, yeah. with the existence of Google and Apple. <coughs> this is, what, y years ago. It, it, it's fascinating because Ben-Gurion, when he was, you know, when you called Ben-Gurion young, he's already right. an old person. But right. when he was at its best as prime minister, he, he thought that the modern man should be uh, engaged in the, the technological uh, developments. Right. So he wanted to, to know how to drive. Right. And in some of his vacation, he pushed out his uh, uh, security person, took the, the, the lead of the car, and almost uh, got into an accident. Because he saw that a person should know how to, to, right. uh, to deal with the, the machines. But in the 70s, he already understand what people are understanding now, now. that the, pers the, the people of the universe become the slave of the technology. technology. And then he said to people, why did you come with car? Right. Start running, start <laughs> walking. Right. And you can see this phenomena of people right. who are running or walking or uh, even is obsessed uh, with uh, yoga and right. uh, Buddhism. He truly proceeded this time. The new age back then. Yeah. And Avi, I could literally sit with you for hours to discuss this. I urge our viewers to take a look at those incredible books, truly to connect Zionism from past, present, and future. Last question before we conclude. So two tremendous books, Begin, Ben-Gurion. What's next? Um, it's still a secret. But if I will succeed, it's going to be huge. I have no <laughs> doubt in my mind that you're going to be extremely successful. Thank you very much for being with us, Avi. We wish you safe and pleasant journey back to our homeland, the homeland of the Jewish people, the state of Israel. That's all the time we have on today's show. I'm Shachar Razani. Thanks for tuning in and keeping an eye on Israel right here on Shalom TV. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support Shalom TV with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the Shalom TV website homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM to Jam, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive on DVD with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.